Get him there, and just like that, bam, click, click, click. Surprisingly, with the winds all up and down the East Coast that we actually have bandwidth. But that is awesome because today is Triumph Tuesday. Good morning, everyone. This is Carol Sue, a.k.a. Nani Boss, Lady Canada, live with two sisters. Hey, and good morning, everyone. My name is Janice, a.k.a. Wellness Diva. It is Triumph Tuesday, and we are digging out from our, um, <coughs> excuse me, our major nor'easter yesterday, and we actually are expecting in this area another one to three inches on top of the, we're just about at 18 inches. So a lot of snow. So I hope you are all keeping warm and safe. And if you do have to go out, you know, allow yourself enough time and, and just, you know, make sure you bundle up. Absolutely. And uh, I, I do know that while obviously we're in Florida, we did not get those wind gusts. We actually did have chilly weather this morning. Still a little, little chilly. I think we woke up and it was uh, upper 30s, uh, which it'll, it'll quickly warm up. I think they said about 930. It should be about 54 degrees, but which is still pretty chilly for, for uh, Florida. But it's the wind. There's a lot of wind gusts. So I'm not sure that I'm getting in my pickleball, but maybe I'm going to try because that would be a triumph to play pickleball in the wind. And, you know, when you're playing a sport such as that and you're elevating your game, you have to learn to play in all, you know, inclement weather. Now, inclement weather here right now is just the wind. Um, so definitely I'm not, you know, battling the snow or the ice I and wearing boots and layers and hand warmers and hats, booties and coats. Oh, I don't miss that. Oh my God, you know what? Today actually is Groundhog Day and I believe that little runt did see his shadow. Did they not, not ever see his shadow or whatever the, there's always, it always seems no matter what punky, hunky, punky, whatever his name is, sees or not sees, it always just seems that there's another six weeks of winter. And you know, when I hear about this day, I don't even think about it in, from, from that aspect. I think about it from the movie uh, Groundhog Day because that just, that, you know, I, first of all, I love Bill Murray. I think he's hysterical. He's one of those classic, classic comedian actors. You know, I remember him in Ghostbusters, you know, that whole series. But in, in this particular series, it just, it, and it's one of those feel good movies. It's funny, it's slap happy, stupid comedy, but sometimes we need that kind of slap happy, stupid comedy to, to, to brighten up a gray gloomy, you know, curl up on the couch the other day mm -hmm. or to, uh, you know, embrace, oh, yeah, it's a little bit chilly, you know, I want to go outside. Well, you know what, I'm going to kind of do, do what I got to do at home, get my, my choice done you know, what, laundry, whatever, and, you know, put on a good, funny movie. So I would highly suggest, since it is Groundhog Day, see if you can find it and have some, like, belly laughs, good belly laughs. There's nothing yeah, we were that big belly laughs to combat what's going on on things that you can't control. Right, and uh, we were actually talking about that this morning, and that's one of the movies that um, I've only seen bits and pieces of. There's a few movie, a handful of movies. You where have never seen the entire movie. Are you flipping kidding me? Never seen the entire movie. Oh my God, it's so funny. That one along with um, Animal House and there's a few others. Oh, and my favorite movie segment of all time, The Godfather. So yes. Sunday afternoon after, you know, I did whatever I did. I'm like, okay, uh, time to relax now. So I just, you know, you've got the voice remote, you know, every everyone kind of has it. And there go the dogs. Oh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I, I go, um, Godfather. And it happened to be playing on one of the, um, the movies. John was, John was also watching the series. And, you know, that, that's another one of those classics, but that's a little bit more serious, you know, type of drama it's a very drama drama series interesting and and obviously action-packed but i have to say that groundhog day is just one of those and even animal house you know i was cracking up because as most of you know i've posted on my facebook wall that i yet have been restricted again um a lot of people say well just don't comment anything and 
you know, I thought I was being pretty clever of not really commenting in the sense of anything very uh, political. And I guess, uh, especially now since we've seen the, uh, and I'm going to use code words, uh, flake, flake book or book flake, because we don't want to say the name because God knows we'll, we'll be in trouble. But the, the, what I had commented, because a lot of people said, well, what did you say that was so bad this time? And I said, I was responding to, there was an article on Pelosi and her husband and the improprieties of them buying up stock. You know, so you, you hear all this, what's going on with GameStop and all of that. And then you've got somebody, you know, it always strikes me that, you know, po politicians come in and they're not really wealthy other than President Trump, and he was not a politician coming in. And they leave billionaires, like billionaires. And how does that happen if you're only pulling in a, you know, 2K, 200K salary per, per year? So I thought that to be quite alarming, but I wanted to make a snarky comment. I'm going to admit it was snarky, but I was w using my words carefully. And I said, uh, why doesn't somebody take a potato knish and hit, hit her? Now, a potato knish, for those of you that don't know, it is a Jewish, and I want to call it a pastry, but it sort of is. It's, it's potato, and then there's like a pastry around it. People have different variations of, you know, eating it, but it's very soft. So it's not like, it's not like a brick. So I said, oh, take a potato. So apparently food fighting, even virtually, goes against book flakes, code of ethics or whatever you want to call them. And then, you know, so, so they restricted me for 30 days. So right now, obviously, no one can have a class action suit against them because of that, uh, whatever it is, 230 amendment thingy, which frees them from being sued from anybody. But I'm hoping one day that that's not the case and that a class action suit does go forward because some of the things are we really, you know, at that point, when I said potato crunch, what are they going to be an animal house now because of the famous food fight uh, cafeteria, which anyone in the 50s and 60s, possibly the 70s, can relate to a food fight. Um, you're not using, you know, weapons, you're using food. And I think what better way, and there is, there is scientific proof and medical proof that releasing energy uh, also helps with our endorphins, helps with our mindset. So why not a little food fight? You're not throwing punches. You're not, um, you know, we're talking about a potato because it's very soft. So I thought that to be kind of ridiculous. But then on top of it, that led me to uh, what Veritas, and if, if you don't know what Veritas is, look it up. It is kind of, a, it's a sting operation where they have undercover people planted in different situations, people, companies, whatnot. So they have just released the book flakes agenda hidden agenda the most most users of their platform did not really i mean they've heard things but to actually hear it from their own words mind control yeah it's a little little uh do 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 i can't even do it because my, my throat is dry but a little kooky little cray cray what do you think about that look i don't know if you saw the video clip but it is and I recommend anyone, regardless of what platforms you use, a lot of people use multiple platforms. And you also have to remember that Bookflake owns more than just Bookflake. So it's pretty scary of what they're doing. So I don't know if you had the opportunity to see that video. I saw the beginning of it. I have not watched the whole thing and uh Censorship is even being censorship. Like I don't even, I don't even know what else to say about that subject other than something ain't right. So I've got to personally dig into that a little more. Just so much. It's 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 crazy to think of, and and I always say always reflect backwards, because when you reflect backwards, that helps you sometimes really strive to, to go a little, little faster with your forward motion. And if you were to look over the last 12 months, because this time last year, uh, the kids were getting ready to fly here. 
you know, Tina's kind of like, I cannot believe I've been stuck home for a, literally a year. And when you reflect backwards, and she said it was probably, and, T, and for those who don't know, Tina, Tina is John and, and, and myself, that's our daughter. Her and Mike and his, and his uh, girlfriend at the time were, were making plans where they were actually getting ready and packed and ready to, to come visit us in Florida. They had not seen the house yet. And Tina reflected on that several times. And I think she actually reflects a little bit of it in the Knockout Shelly project, which is due to come out soon. And she talks about how that was one of her most favorite and memorable carefree vacation. And to think that within a few days, how drastically that would change. So if we could all take a moment to think back to where you were a year ago, knowing what we know now, what has occurred, you would have never, ever, well, some people would, if you think outside the box, would not, would not really grasp the magnitude of what social media is doing, not only to our mindset, but to our lives, to our livelihoods, to, uh, you know, causing that conflict with, within people because of the way the platform is set up. In addition to really understanding that major uh, MSM, so major, major streaming media, your local mainstream media, is doing the exact same thing. And they use the excuse of the aligning themselves with the current administration. That's pretty scary because it all started about four years ago. And he, and he actually talks about that. So when, what was four years ago? Four years ago is when President Trump was inaugurated. So this whole plan, this whole collusion between Russia and all of that, uh, what transpired, the targets that were targeted in, in the administration, the American people were targeted. So this was this has been like a four year plan. And then of course, you, the icing on the cake was the China virus out of the Wuhan lab. Yes, it's called the China virus. Disregard whatever executive order, the ding dong in the people's house is talking about lately. Cause I don't know, I can't even keep up with how many EOs he assigned. However, so this whole mind control thing has been going on for four years. Would you think, a, you know, putting that kind of in the back seat, which that's a major seat, of what's transpired over the last year? And it's kind of, it's cray cray. It absolutely is. And it reminds me, um, quite frankly, of a bully. The American public is being bullied. Companies are being bullied. Oh, speaking of companies, how about my pillow? See the whole oh my God, absolutely. That my thank you, Democrats and social media that you know totally just you know uh, decided to go after him. It's kind of like the Goya products. Go out, you know, I'm not even sure that my pillow is a stock, but if it is, go out and buy it. I don't know if it is, if it's publicly owned to a certain degree, I'm not sure. But in any case, support him. He's got great sales. He's always offering uh, discounts for his pillows, for his sheets, for, you know, they even have pet products. Mm -hmm. So how cool is that, that his bicot, the American people said, screw this. There are some things that we can control. We know we can't really can't control the government. We don't have to accept what's going on there. But as a consumer, we do have a lot of power. So power to the people with the bicot on my pillows. I encourage you, mypillows.com. Check it out. Mike Lindell is just, you know, he resonates with me. He's a recovering alcoholic. He's he truly is an American. And he's had slips. Yeah, and he talks about them. But he is truly a, an American story of success when you have that you know i'm not going to quit attitude you're never going to quit i don't quit on me i'm not going to quit on myself and i almost get the feeling that our government the current administration or fake administration in my eyes is really setting people up because they want everyone to fail they want the american people to fail social media wants 
American people to fail. And guess what? You've been throwing so much shit at us. Shista. And we are still trying our best and we're crawling back. And guess what? We're not going to quit. We're going to support those that you go attack. We are going to su support not only the big guy that you're, you're attacking, but the little people, the little entrepreneurs like ourselves. Do you think, you know, restricting me again for 30 days for talking about a potato finish being thrown is going to stop me from getting my message out? Yeah, I may have to kind of weave, but I don't care. I'm not going to stop. And I even actually have quite a few Democrat friends that we, we, don't, we definitely don't agree on politics, that's for sure. And I've kind of like, you know, made a conscious choice that I cannot have that space in my space. You know, what are you doing? Did you, you know, how are you managing all of that? I'm managing it. Thanks for asking. <laughs> but I'm managing it and I won't stop. Um, you know, the... And by the way, I am really working hard <laughs> on the um part because when you're public speaking, not that I'm, we're public speaking, but technically we are, um, that's not a good habit to have. Speaking of which, I just kind of want to segue for a, a moment. The new press secretary. Ooh. I let's flip some pages because I don't know what I'm talking about. It's, it's really difficult. It is very difficult for me to watch her, but I do. It's difficult for me to watch Chris Como Cuomo, but I do. When you project your voice, when you're talking about something, when you're in that position, you really have to say it like you mean it. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I mean, I, I've only seen little clips of her because I cannot, I cannot. To me, it's like a comedy show. And using the it's not even a word, but using the um factor, um, it's because that's a point in your, when you're articulating that you have to pause. And I always tell people, because I catch myself doing it as well, is try speaking a tad slower, which for me is hard because I'm a fast talker, but also when the urge comes, because you, you feel it, you truly do feel it coming on. I, I, in order to change a habit, you actually have to go through the habit to recognize the signals of when it's going to occur. And that is a perfect spot to just not say anything, like do a pause. And any good voice coach, speaker coach is going to translate, translate that to you in such a way and give you actually exercises to help facilitate you from changing that habit because people don't do it on purpose. It's a habit. It's just a natural kind of almost stop, pause, stop, pause, but they're using that, that noise. So I would gather from the clips that I've seen of her, besides her, I have to circle back to that. And apparently the last clip I saw, which I believe was last night, she was circling back from a week's worth of circling backs. And I thought, this should be on Saturday Night Live if this is just too funny. She is not in, and I'm going to say this much, she is not in an easy position. That is a very difficult job. It is hard to roll in and wheel in and let go of the reporters because they're savages. They don't care who's behind the podium. Although I have to tend to agree with most podcast personnel that I've heard talk about that piece to it, they were a lot kinder to this administration and to the fake in the in the people's house. However, with that, they're starting to toy with her somewhat from what I could see from some of the little clips because they are now starting to ask. It's almost like, and a lot of people call, call you know when you get buyer's remorse? Yeah, you buy something, you, you thought it was the right fit. And then you get it home 
and it doesn't quite fit the way you thought it was going to fit, you've already taken the damn tags off and you can't return it. Well, that's what's happening in our country. A lot of people are having buyer's remorse, voter's remorse, because now they actually see that everything they claimed in the few times that he decided to walk up the stairs from the basement to come out and make a visit, a lot of the things that he chatted about or circled around and danced, they're realizing, wow, he is not who he said he was. And that's the important piece to voting. And that is one of the great gifts of campaigning. It, as much as it is annoying to the American people, sometimes having debates or lack thereof or one-sided debates where the media is favoring one for the other paints a different picture for the American people. And for those that still swear by their mainstream media Bible, were never exposed to really what was going to be in that administration. And now I think they're getting a flavor and they're having buyer remorse. They don't like the taste. Speaking of flavors, what type of questions do they ask? Oh, what is your favorite ice cream? Are you flipping kidding me? And the color, didn't they? I think they asked a question, what color? Were they what color paint they were gonna use in the Oval Office or you know, one of the rooms? And I thought, this is a this is the best we have. How, how much of these if those are the questions, hire me. Nani Boss can I can do that. I can I can play the part of a mainstream media reporter. I truly can. I, and I would do it exactly how they do it. But I'd have to add my own little spin, of course, because it would be like vomit here, vomit there. Are you kidding me? I think that would be my response. Are you flipping kidding me? I don't want to know the color of the White House, the inside of it or whatever they're doing. I don't care. I want to know what, in fact, this meatball is planned for our country. And we already have a good, we already have a good idea of it. And that is why I think a lot of people are, not only are they tuning out because the ratings the ratings are terrible, although some outlets will pad them, kind of like padding the China virus numbers. It's all about padding. And it's all about journal integrity. And I go back to the one and only, uh, the Walter Conkright. I said that correctly, his last name, Cronkite. My advice, and I am not a professional, okay? My advice to these so-called journalists from different news stations, such as the Corrupted News Network, you know, CNN used to be good years ago. What would Walter Cronkite think of the way that you are portraying your journal integrity exactly and you know what was funny last night was i wasn't really watching tv but we know our, our dad loved law and order he, he could watch that for there were certain series he could watch for hours so ironically law and order was on and i think it was the, it was on the channel because i was still on that same ch channel from my sunday's depressed half hour or two hours of uh, and then getting myself out of that fog watching uh, Miss Congeniality. So it was on and they were arguing a point over, and it was so relevant, which, was, which I thought was so bizarre. It had to do with a person that murdered a US citizen, but he was from overseas. He was some sort of uh, prime minister. Or I don't even know what his role was. And of course the, the attorneys are arguing the fact to the judge, they're, they're arguing the constitution and they said, well, you know, what's the worst that's going to happen? This is, and all of a sudden they say, you really think you're going to be able to, to go forth with this case because, you know, Adam Schiff is going to have, you know, a field day, blah, 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 blah. And so the lawyer, actor, you know, I don't really care basically what Adam Schiff thinks. And I just like, you know, because that was, I don't know when this episode was years ago. 
And I believe this particular, because you know you have the different versions of law and order, order special, you know, units, whatever the yeah. yeah, whatever the segment is. So I believe this one was in obviously in California. But I was laughing because it really talked about the Constitution. It talked about um, you know, the strong arm of the media, you know, and they were re more referring to more like newspapers. And then Adam Schiff's name came came up. And I thought, A, it was kind of funny, but two, like we're talking about, you have news outlets and you have mainstream media and is mixed now with politics so terribly that the politicians are really controlling what we are listening to, what we're hearing. And I think the main mantra for all of them is this particular administration currently going on right now. So that's all that's it's all going to be one sided. So I, I but I do think you're 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 listening to some reporters that they're not they're not they're they're even second guessing the fluff because I do believe the network that you mentioned did come out with some sort of storyline that was on point and surprising for them because of the stands that they've already taken over these last four years. So it is interesting on this Triumph Tuesday on the things that Americans have to triumph over. We have to triumph over things within our own lives and give ourselves a pat on the back of things that we've accomplished. But sometimes you're dealing with this onslaught, slaughter of news and social media and what they're doing and the mind control and the, the, that they want to really control what is in our world. So the options are you tune it out, you don't go on as often, and we've talked many times about that, how to limit yourself. Now, if you're an entrepreneur that uses social media a lot, you have to kind of go through your newsfeed. And what I'm finding when I'm doing is unfollowing everything that's basically news related. Because my feeling is if I want to get the information, I, there's always a way to get it. The other thing, because you are an Apple user and we have a lot of, a lot of our viewers mm -hmm. and listeners are Apple users. John, who is an Apple user, I am not finding that they're eliminating apps and or taking away apps. So he watches One America News and apparently for the last 48 hours, he can't even get into it. Like they just, they don't allow it. And I thought, you know, those are pretty obvious things that conglomerates are doing. But what do you think about that? that I mean, that, that in itself is, is censorship. But now they're letting, it's again, telling us, you know, so when you look at it on a scale like that, which is huge, what's going to be next? Is it going to be, oh, for eBooks, because a lot of people publish eBooks, we're only going to allow four. Oh, you didn't make the cut. Or if you're in health and wellness and you sell nutrition or coffee or material, are they going to start picking and choosing where we have access to go buy it, to listen to it? Podcasts, because they're already doing that with podcasts now. Some platforms will not allow conservative podcasts. So that's the road that we're heading. And what does that equate to? Communism. Communism, socialism. You know, we have we have legal malpractice, we have medical malpractice, and in my opinion, there should be media malpractice. I agree with that. I like that. Let's 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 get all of our viewers and listeners hashtagging that. Media, what'd you call it? Media media malpractice. Media malpractice. Because you know, you wonder whether there'd be an you know an attorney or a group of attorneys that whether they have a conservative background or not, and I actually don't even think that should be a selling piece to it. 
because it would be nice if somebody, regardless of political belief, said, this is just not right. And take the bulls by the horn. And while because of the 203 or 230, I guess it's 230, whatever, that particular amendment to whatever is for them that you cannot sue them. There has to be another way. There's got to be a way around that where you may not be suing the company, but maybe you can sue the individual. I don't know. I, I'd be interested to see whether an attorney or a group of attorneys can answer that question based on the 230 and all that nonsense. Right. And I always go back to that movie that I saw on Netflix about Walter Cronkite and the JFK assassination. It's called 1 p.m. Central Time. And it really was such an integral part. 1 p.m. Central Time. Yeah, and you said that was on Netflix? I believe it was on Netflix. I'm almost positive. Huh. Never heard of that. It was very informative, just unbelievable. Obviously, we've all heard different documentaries about J the JFK assassination. And obviously, this covers that documentary. It you know covers the JFK assassination, but it's really at the look from the new journalistic integrity and how Walter Cronkite although he wanted to be first to deliver whatever news it was, as with any news organization, when there's something big happening in the world, he wanted to get it right. And it really is. I got, shivers. I got shivers on just feeling that because you can imagine how much integrity it took for him to do that. It, it was amazing, and if you have a chance, I highly suggest, what, whether you have your different opinions about the JFK assassination, this really is from the journal, journalistic standpoint of Walter Cronkite and what the journalists in the world on that day, how they reacted. So it was very, very interesting, very informative, highly suggested. On that I would also say that that might be a good, a very good film for if a uh, current newscaster or reporter has not seen it, learn from the master, learn something different, regardless of what your, the person, the thumb company that you work for is dictating you do, why not see the greats? and how they handled a major news story. I think that would be a, a, a good lesson for them. Absolutely, journalistic integrity at the highest standard way back when. Unbelievable. On that note, it is Triumph Tuesday, February 2nd, Groundhog Day. Keep warm, keep safe. My name is Janice, AKA Wellness Diva, along with two and this is Carol Sue, aka Nonny Boss, Lady Canna, live from Vero Beach, a very windy Vero Beach, but the winds look like they're coming. I'm going to see if I can go triumph the wind and hit some pickleball because I'm getting my I'm getting my serve on, so I'm I'm feeling good about that, and that's what I'm hoping to triumph this week. Serve in my backhand. You guys have an awesome day, and we will see you tomorrow on Wealth Wellness Wednesday. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, everyone.